We're going to go on a short satellite image trip to see the biblical archaeological finds Ron Wyatt has made. And first of all, we're flying into eastern Turkey to the remains of Noah's Ark. And you can see it below us. There, the boat shaped object. The Turkish authorities have officially recognized this site as the remains of Noah's Ark and following that they have built a visitor's center here. These petrified remains of Noah's Ark rest in the mountains of Ararat as the Bible says and the snowy peak of Mount Ararat itself is seen behind and then to the far left are the locations of Noah's house and an anchor stone. And next we fly to Israel to the ashen remains of Gomorrah, one of the cities of the plain that were destroyed by fire and brimstone from heaven. Gomorrah is found here below Masada by the Dead Sea. In the midst of the ashes of the remains of Gomorrah, Ron Wyatt has found sulphur balls and sulphur doesn't seem to exist in this form anywhere else in the world to our knowledge. Here you can see the forms of the old city. The area of, of Gomorrah is quite vast. A modern road runs down through the middle and here below you can see the possible remains of a sphinx. And from Israel we fly to Egypt to the Saqqara pyramid complex. Uh, Ron White believes that this is where Joseph's uh, grain pits um, are located. And Ron White identifies Joseph as the historical Amenhotep who built this pyramid, this step pyramid for Pharaoh Joseph. And here's a close-up on the, on the pyramid area and you can see these black holes, these big pits, and they are interconnected with each other through under, underground shafts. From Egypt we fly to the Gulf of Aqaba over the Sinai Peninsula and uh, this is where the exodus took place at Nueva. Ron Wyatt and his sons have been diving here and they have found a golden chariot wheel that would belong to a pharaoh. Whilst here Ron Wyatt found a pillar or a column partly in the sea and uh, he had found a similar column on the other side on the Saudi Arabian side with inscriptions saying that King Solomon had erected it. So King Solomon has erected these pillars on both sides of the Gulf to commemorate the Red Sea. And then we fly over the Gulf of Aqaba, over the Red Sea, to the Saudi Arabian side where the Israelites went on their way and we come to the split rock of Moses, the giant rock that has a very long shadow as you can see here. As you can see, uh, the rock is really big and it's split in the middle and water erosion can be detected as water gushed out. And from the split rock of Moses we continue on to the real Mount Sinai. And in this satellite image, the top of Mount Sinai, the peak, is covered in clouds but you can make out that the area is blackened. Mount Sinai is a three peak mountain range and you can see that all of it is blackened. And here in this zoom up you can see that the bottom of the mountain is not black. And then we fly to the base of Mount Sinai to see the remains of an altar erected by Moses.
it's this V shape down here at the bottom. And higher up the mountain there's a plateau that is big enough to fit the 70 Israelite elders that went up the mountain with Moses. To the right of the plateau there's also a cave as the Bible tells us and then below there are the giant remains of an altar, the altar of the golden calf. It has petroglyphs of Egyptian bulls on it and it's been fenced around by the Saudi Arabian authorities. The Bible tells us that a river flowed down the mountain and a large dry riverbed can be can be seen here and also the remains of wells can be found here. And here's an overview of the whole area and to the east of Mount Sinai there is a large plain that is big enough to fit the people of Israel as they stayed there for quite a long time.